This is High School Not So Much a Musical, a podcast that takes you on a ride through the peaks and valleys of a high school journey. Here are your presenters, Nitin Jaladanki and Ayush Agarwal. So Ayush, one thing that I wanted to ask you was, what do you think is the most impactful podcast that we've done so far? Because what we, our goal was to get to 100 podcasts by the, like the September time of this year. And we're very, very close. We've recorded, I would say, maybe 97 podcasts in the last couple of months. So Ayush, we've done a lot, but what do you think is the most impactful podcast for you? A bet that you got done? Oh no, yeah, it was a question to me, like okay. specifically asking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, hmm. I really like the one with Devin Leos uh, for uh, Finch. It was essentially, Devin Leos, is, he's essentially like a child actor. He's, he played a role in uh, Mighty Med, the Disney Channel show. So okay. uh, we talked with him and I think what was particularly impactful about that episode was like just the emotion he had for his like life story because he was like falsely accused of uh, like attempted murder and vehicle assault. So he, 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 he like really went deep into his entire life story and kind of uh, talking about that was really impactful, I think for me, because it kind of, it kind of opened my eyes to like, the challenges he faced. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Nathan, do you have, what do you think? Yeah, so I think that yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you guys a question. You know, you asked me about what inspired me. What inspired you guys to start this movement? Because I think it's really commendable um, of, of your goal of 100. And, you know, when you're looking at how close you are to reaching that, I always want to know, well, what, what got you started in the first place? So I think I can speak on behalf of Ayush and I. But as high schoolers, when the COVID pandemic started, we were really left with not being able to apply any of the knowledge that we learned in school. So if we were in school, we would have done a lot of hands-on activities where we could have maybe simulated, let's say, if you're taking like an economics class about some like, like maybe cost benefit analysis, all that kind of like the different types of things that you can do in person in school. But when school went online, we were just kind of learning the textbook material. We were left without a place to apply it, but we wanted to get the real life like implications of what we were learning. And we were, I, I started listening to this podcast called Freakonomics, and that kind of like opened my eyes to how economics was applied in like an everyday setting, where they talk about the economics of socks, the economic of how Americans spend thousands of dollars on just lawns, like a piece of grass in the front of their house. And that really showed that podcasts are a very strong way to kind of get this message across. And we, we kind of left it there. We didn't really touch the podcast world yet. But then our dean actually posted an opportunity for the fourth annual New York Times podcast contest, where it brought together high schoolers around the world. And you got to submit a five minute podcast on a topic of your choice. And when we enter that contest, we relatively had no idea what we were doing, how a podcast really worked and stuff like that. But we realized that it's honestly just having a conversation with people and trying to inform the people who are listening about something different that they haven't learned about yet. So we actually ended up placing um, third or 13th out of like 1500 people who um, applied for the contest. So that sort of gave us the boost that we kind of know what we're doing and we can definitely take this far. And that's when we realized there's a ton of other high schoolers who are feeling the same thing that we are about how they're not able to apply the concepts that they're learning in school. They're not able to kind of focus with the pandemic anymore. And that's when we realized that if we do start a podcast, if we bring together subject experts or just somebody who's very specialized in a field, people who just have differing ideas than us, we're kind of able to present the high school audience with ideas that they haven't heard before. And a couple of examples of that is we met with this anthropologist major or anthropology major who's in college right now. And she's basically using carbon dating and stuff like that to kind of talk about the importance of anthropology and understanding how human behavior goes through all this kind of stuff. And the thing is, this isn't stuff that you hear every day in high school. These are the types of topics that are only covered if somebody talks about it directly to you. We've talked about lawyers. We've talked with lawyers about law. 
We've talked about how public speaking is critical to success. We've talked about movies, entrepreneurship. It's a whole array of topics. We really just like to get different types of people on during different times of the year and just make sure that there's different there's a lot of ideas that high schoolers are exposed to so that's what was the driving force for us and the reason that we want to get to 100 episodes just that's a nice milestone number i guess and it kind of has us to keep driving to um work for the part to work on the podcast and meet a lot of people because in the beginning time in the beginning of the podcast we were posting only once a week so we weren't having to record many episodes at all but then we realized that slowly with school starting we would have to really hustle and maybe record three to four podcasts a weekend and i would say that january every like saturday and sunday we would have four podcasts each for both of those days and be recording so it kind of built a work ethic inside of us and exposed us to all the different types of people that were there uh i used you want you want to add on anything that i missed i think um in terms of like the subject experts thing so one guy we talked to he's like a computer scientist he he talked about how you know studying computer science in like school and college is very different from what you end up doing in the actual workforce so that's why we really wanted to start bringing on like subject experts and guests for every single episode because um when you realize that a lot of these subject experts they're not exactly utilizing the knowledge that they used in college they're more using like the practical implications of it that's when we realized a lot of the knowledge that we're learning in school is like very 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 fundamental and it's really necessary to get like the practical implications of that knowledge from these subject experts which is where you actually end up learning how the knowledge is applied to like the real world oh that's awesome yep so i think now we can transition into you know a few more questions for you so uh if you want to talk a little bit more about you know do you have any other ventures besides your podcast? Uh yeah, so I I've, I've been a a TV and uh well, a really really a personality for man over 20 years. Uh, I once had a teen talk show um that's that was seen in over 33 countries and I've led campaigns and uh overseen presidential races and currently now man, I um I I contract my services. I host major events. Uh, every year I host uh, the college football uh, tailgate, which is one of the biggest ones in the country for UCLA and USC. Um, I also uh, do events for Ford. I got NASCAR coming up this weekend. I just did NHRA this past week. Um, and so, you know, I'm always looking at how to expand and, and do more. Um, I, like I told you guys, probably back in 2012, um, I took a long break. Um, I just really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. And so, you know, um, as I reacclimate myself into the industry, um, look, just looking at other ways to push what I'm doing. I, I'm a voiceover artist, and so, you know, my voice has been used in commercials, and um, uh, I was the, the main voice on the major cartoon network uh, cartoon series called NBA Hoop Troop. And so um, every now and again, I delve into a little acting, but, you know, for the most part, uh, I'm really low key. So for like the people who are listening right now, what would you say are some of your biggest inspirations for what you've done? Because I feel like everybody has this kind of guiding force behind them, whether it's their parents or some kind of family member. So who was your guiding inspiration for where you or the, the work you've done so far? Who is my guiding inspiration for the work I've done? Um, up until my mother passed uh, back in, well, 20, 22 years ago now, um, she was she was a great force in pushing me to be all I could be because she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And once I lost her, you know, I was kind of uh, self-motivating because my mother taught me that losing was never going to be an option for me. And so ha- taking that into consideration and looking at life, like we, we oftentimes will fall short of our goal. You know, um, we may not reach what we want to reach. 
in a time period. We may not reach where we want to reach at all. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean we fail. It just means we fell short. And so um, keeping that inspiration of, hey, let me go. I've, I've always been one to say, I want better, not just for me, but I always thinking about other people. I want better for them. And so the people in general inspire me to do things that I feel like can be an assistance to them, you know? And that came from my mother. You know, she taught me a lot. I saw her work a government program in our community where she introduced the government free cheese program. It was when the when the first uh, uh, food stamp program began and there was a lot of people that needed those those resources. And so she taught me at an early age how to connect with the community and always be a person that served others. And so that was a drive it had been a, has been a driving force uh my entire life uh up until uh, i got married and now it's my wife who keeps me going and says hey you can do anything that you desire to do and you know um that that is i think that's that's very telling when it comes to how we live because i was just talking about this last night on our podcast we've been taught as a society that we can make it on our own. And unfortunately, that's just not true. You, you can't make it on your own. Everybody needs somebody to assist them. Everybody that is somebody has had someone help them to get to where they want to go or, or what they want to do. And in my life, it was my, my mother and now it's my wife. Yeah, uh, it's really important to, you know, kind of recognize and show gratitude towards those who have helped you along the way you know so uh thank you so much for that um other than that we're kind of winding down the podcast over here so we'll end it off with you know our infamous tips question which we ask to every single person who comes on which is essentially you know for high schoolers like us you know doing podcasting doing these types of content creation things looking to you know potentially even make this our careers uh what do you think is are some of the most important tips and what 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 are what what are the most important tips that you would give to high schoolers like us trying to you know make an impact through content creation and uh, what are some of the tips that you've used along your journey in order to make such a big impact well um let me first say thank you guys for having me um i've really enjoyed this conversation with you guys when it comes to high schools and you guys in particular and, and looking at making an impact impact should be authentic and when you look at the vast knowledge that you guys house even at your ages now uh never stop learning you know um i was on a tour in 2008 with actor and acclaimed uh best-selling author and acclaimed actor hill harper and one of the biggest lessons he taught me then was you got to surround yourself with people who have the same vision for you as you have for yourself. And I have learned you have to become an active architect of your own destiny. And if you guys desire to make an impact or anybody that's listening desires to be impactful in our world, you have to become an active architect of your own destiny. And in this life that I call the, the race of a lifetime, you have to understand that there are always going to be hurdles on your track. You might be on your first hurdle. You might be on your fifth hurdle. You might even be on your ninth or 10th hurdle. At the end of the day, you have to understand to be impactful, you have to become a hurdler because there's gonna always be obstacles placed on your track of life that may pro may seem to prohibit you from moving forward. But when you are a hurdler, you understand that you have the ability to simply jump over life's hurdles and route to your destiny and where you wanna go. And lastly, go after what you want so you don't ever have to settle for what you can get. You shouldn't become a settler. Well, this will do or that'll do because at the end of the day, if you want to be impactful, you have to be a trailblazer. And oftentimes you're going to have to go first because if you don't go first, there'll be no door open for anyone else to come along behind you. And so those are the things I would say to you guys and your audience is being authentic, becoming an active architect of your own destiny 
and blazing the trail, kicking the door open and allowing other people to come behind you. And don't be afraid to help those who may not have the wisdom or knowledge you have, because that's the other thing that's a part of your gift and your purpose is what you know. And if you continue learning, you're gonna grow. And if you, as you continue growing, you're gonna learn more. And that is the key to success. And I believe that's the key to happiness in life. Well, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to come on to our podcast today. It was a really inspiring, inspira- uh, inspiring conversation, especially given that, you know, we were able to relate to it so much since you were talking about your experiences with podcasts and uh, your experiences with recording podcasts and recording content creation and content creation, which we've all, we all also been doing for the past, you know, six to eight months now. So uh, thank you so much for coming on and to our listeners, stay tuned for future episodes. See you all next time. That's our show for today. Now roll the credits. High School Not So Much a Musical is hosted by Ayush Agarwal, Nitin Jaladanki, and Rishi Sinha. Narration by Samhit Padala. Music from Louis Luang Relaxation Cafe, Tune Pocket, and Infraction. If you like the show, please recommend it to your friends and family. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next